Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture on Dirac Heisenberg model of exchange interaction. And uh, so in this lecture, we, we are going to see the concept and uh, derivation. So by the end of this lecture, we will calculate and the, we will find the expression for exchange energy. And uh, in the next lecture, we will classify uh, magnetic materials based on the exchange energy expression that we get. So, so in certain materials like iron, cobalt, nickel, there is spontaneous magnetization. It was observed even in the absence of external magnetic field. So, uh, we predicted that this, this is due to internal magnetic field called molecular magnetic field. So this spontaneous magnetization, it was predicted that due to internal magnetic field, which is, which is magnet, molecular magnetic field. Now the internal field was set up due to ordering effect. So because of the ordering of uh, molecules, the internal field was set up and uh, this is this is due to the interaction between magnetic moments of individual atom. So we know that each individual atom has a magnetic moment. And because of the ordering effect of these individual atoms, the internal field was set up. And that is uh, responsible for spontaneous magnetization, which is predicted by these. So V's theory, it is pre predicted that the magnetic field is 10 power 3 gas. So now, because of the mag because of uh, interaction between the magnetic moments of individual atoms, the internal field that is the internal magnetic field that is set up is 10 power 3 gas. But for getting such a spontaneous magnetization in these materials, iron, cobalt, nickel, the magnetic moments we uh, require is almost 10 power 7 gas is needed. So, so this theory had uh, had unable to uh, this theory prediction is not meeting the uh, the amount of magnetic field required. That is ten power seven gas. So, so then Eisenberg he correctly identified. Uh, so this theory was wrong in that context. So Eisenberg correctly identified that the exchange energy is of electrostatic origin and a dipole-dipole interaction. So this is responsible for spontaneous magnetization. So here he identified the exchange energy. Uh, so the energy responsible for spontaneous magnetization is exchange energy and it is of electrostatic origin. and. Uh, so, and he identified that this is a purely quantum mechanical phenomenon. Now, uh, previously, according to Hitler London, if there are two atoms having a single electron, so that could be hydrogen, only hydrogen has a single electron. So when we take two uh, single electron atoms, so certainly only two hydrogen atoms, then the orbital wave function for these two electron systems can be uh, constructed with linear combination of quantities. So as, as shown here below, this is for symmetric case and this is for asymmetric case. In symmetric case, psi A of R1 and psi B of R2 plus psi A of R2 and psi B of R1, R1 and R2 are positions of the two atoms. And for asymmetric case, psi A of R1, psi B of R2, here we get minus uh, psi A of R2 and psi B of R1. So this is a orbital wave function of two electron system uh, constructed uh, with linear combination. And uh, so this is how we are building up. Uh, so initially orbital wave function and then the spin pot. So that was orbital wave function even. Uh, so spin also has a, a wave function. Uh, so actually spin is also uh, used to spin momentum. Hence uh, spin part also should be considered here. 
Now the similar way, the spin part of the two electrons. So here S1 for symmetric case, S0 is denoted for anti-symmetric case. So in the symmetric case, S1 and S2, both the spins upward plus two downward. This is a linear combination. This is a combination of the quantities and for asymmetric case, one electron spins in one direction and the other in the downward minus and S1 down and again S2 in the upward direction. So this is a spin part of the wave function. Now uh, consider a model with two electrons, which are indistinguishable. Means the two uh, electrons have same uh, uh, properties or same uh, quantities. So they are indistinguishable and their position vectors are R1 and R2. Now the total wave function is composed of single electron state. So because the two electrons are indistinguishable, the total wave function is composed of single electron state. So here we are getting psi A of R1 into psi B of R2, unlike previous case. Here the two electrons are not considered indistinguishable. But as we are considering here, the two electrons are indistinguishable we end up with uh, the total wave function like this. Now, because electrons are fermions and they fulfill Pauli's exclusion principle, hence it leads to anti-symmetric wave function. So here, uh, so whatever the particles are fermions, they will fulfill Pauli's exclusion principle. So based on Pauli's exclusion principle, an energy state will be occupied by two particles, like two electrons. So when two electrons occupy the same uh, energy state, they will be anti-symmetric because one electron will have spin upwards and the other will have spin downwards. That is the spin of the two electro two particles will be opposite. So it results in an anti-symmetric wave function. Now, uh, based on the spin of electrons, there are two possibilities. So, so if the symmet so based on the spin, like there will be symmetric spatial part in combination with the anti-symmetric spin part. Uh, in anti-symmetric spin part, uh, the two electrons will have opposite spin, and uh, this case represents a singlet state. So, in singlet state, S is zero, that is spin one up and the other down. So the corresponding total wave function is psi s is equal to one by root two. This is a combination we have a seen for the symmetrical spatial part uh, or uh, orbital wave function part. It is symmetrical, but uh, spin part is anti-symmetric, so s is zero. Now we have one by root two. We have multiplied with this and. Uh, now, another case is anti-symmetric spatial part or anti-symmetric orbital wave function with a symmetric spin part. So in this case, it represents a triplet state that is S is equal to one. So either the two spin of the two electrons are upwards or downward, and this corresponding total wave function for triplet state is one by root two. This is the anti-symmetric spatial part. So here we get minus and uh, one by root two. Now, according to Dirac Heisenberg, it would be simpler to model the two spin system by a spin Hamiltonian, which contains only spin operator. So here, uh, uh, here we are modeling the spin system by using a spin operator. Now this essentially brings the details of the energy level scheme. Now here, the spin dependent of Hamiltonian model is given by Heisenberg Dirac, that is H exchange, which is equal to minus 2J SI dot SJ. Here, summation of I comma J. So here, uh, I and J represents the number of electrons. Suppose for a two electron system, then I will be one and J will be two. So only S1 and S2. So this is a two electron system, which equals to minus two J into S1. Uh, 
dot s2 where j is the exchange integral here now solving the schrodinger equation uh, we get the energy value is equal to c plus r minus j here c is coulomb integral and j is exchange integral and uh, taking into account normalized spin parts of the singlet and triplet wave function so this s square is now equal to s1 square plus s2 square and uh, when we uh, when we solve this algebraic expression we get s1 square plus s2 square plus 2 into s1 s2 now for case 1 that is uh, when the spin part is anti symmetric it is a singlet state as we know and for singlet state s is 0 s1 s2 or 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 uh, so here magnitude of this s bar is s into s plus 1 so magnitude square is s into s plus 1 similarly for s1 and s2 uh, s2 into s2 plus 1 and uh, for this s1 into s1 plus 1 now uh, if we calculate that s1 dot s2 these two vectors so it will be s into s plus 1 minus so just uh, we are uh, we are finding s1 dot s2 from here so so actually it's uh, so here this s cap square is s into s plus 1 and s into into s plus 1 so that we are substituting those things here and uh, so from this expression we are uh, calculating sub respective these terms hence uh, we get this expression here and for singlet state s is 0 and s1 is 1 by 2 s2 is 1 by 2 so when we substitute that we get uh, is 1 dot s2 is minus 3 by 4 so h exchange will be minus 2j s1 dot s2 which is minus 2j into minus 3 by 4 which is equal to 3j by 2 uh, and uh, so this is for this case and for the next uh, case to the spin part is symmetric and it is uh, it is in triplet state so s is 1 and uh, s1 is 1 by 2 s2 is 1 by 2 as usual so for this uh, also similarly as previous case when we simplify it uh, we get 1 by 4 now here h exchange is minus 2j into s1 dot s2 which is minus j by 2 so now here difference between the energy of the two exchange energies that is delta e is equal to 3j minus 2 minus of minus j by 2 this is equal to 2j now based on these expression we are going to calculate the we are going to classify the materials so we here we have 2j so in the next lecture uh, we will see how material magnetic how materials are classified how magnetic materials are classified based on this uh, expression delta epsilon is equal to 2j okay uh, so thank you so much for watching this video if you have any queries write in the comments and uh, see you in the next lecture